Hello friends, now time to start the next chapter. We have already done everything up to chapter 4. Now I am on chapter number 5. And the title of the chapter is Importation, Exportation and Transportation of the Goods. From exam perspective, this chapter may not be very very important. But it is relevant to understand customs. Right? So, what is the process of import? When the goods originate from a place outside India, how the goods can enter into India and where the goods are unloaded and how the goods are, can be removed there from, what is the formality to be completed, all that we are going to read in this, that is about import. Same is about export. So, goods are brought to a particular place which is called as custom station, therefore what are the formalities to be completed and when the permission is obtained and then the goods are allowed to be loaded for being shipped outside India, that is export. Then import can also be by way of baggage. So when the passenger is coming to India, that is the import of baggage. When the passenger is leaving India, that is the export of baggage. So there are provisions for how much baggage can be brought in. It is, there is nothing like what can be taken out, but what can be brought in by way of baggage. And what kind of duty will be there, what kind of exemption will be there, that is one part. Another important part in this chapter is the stores. Stores means consumables on board any vessel or aircraft. Right. So that may be food item, that may be fuel, that may be the, uh, you can say the tools and necessaries required for consumption. So import and uh, import of stores is altogether different. Right. Because that is not treated at par with the goods which are imported otherwise. So all that we are going to study in this chapter. Right. So for understanding customs, the chapter is very, very important. But my view is this is not very important for the purpose of exam. So read it thoroughly twice, thrice and then you can decide yourself how much stress you want to put on this chapter. Now in this chapter the very first page that talks about the learning outcomes means what is expected from you to know once you have completed the study of this chapter. What you should be knowing that is with the learning outcomes. The comprehend the statutory provisions pertaining to importation and exportation. Now, in this import and export, lots of sections are involved and every section is having a potential of a small question. Almost every section is having a potential of small question. So when I do that, I will pinpoint which are the sections which are really important for the purpose of your exam. Next is analyze and apply the procedure for clearance of imported goods and export goods. So procedural questions generally is, those are not there in the final exam. Then understand the provisions relating to postal articles and stores once in a while small questions. Then analyze and apply the procedure relating to clearance of baggage. Baggage is one area where from questions are expected and generally questions are there in the exam from the chapter of baggage. And then we have analyze and statutory provisions pertaining to transit and transshipment and appreciate the difference between the two then understand the provisions relating to coastal goods. So as such it is a big chapter, lots of provisions are involved but as far as importance is concerned that is a different issue altogether. Okay. So now let us start from page number 2. On page number 2, the first title that is importation which I am referring, they say goods can be imported by sea, by air, by land. It can be imported as a baggage, it can be imported as a stores, it can be imported by courier, lot many ways of importation of the goods. Then definition and important terms, right. Friends, I doubt anybody will ever ask you a definition in the exam. But the words referred in the letter part are defined here. So that's why this, these definitions should be known to you. Right. So I don't recommend you to cram the definitions as far as exam is concerned, but it is important to understand so that you can understand the provisions which we are going to discuss later. So friends, now let us read some of the definitions and I'll explain you wherever it becomes necessary. Okay. Adjudicating authority. Earlier also I have explained you adjudication means what? So adjudication is one word which is a combination of administration within given jurisdiction. So this is a combination of administration and jurisdiction. And what is the meaning of administration? It is 
simple the officers who are responsible for compliance with the provisions officers responsible for compliance of the provisions so those officers who can decide whether the compliance is there or not and accordingly they can pass an order all those are referred as adjudicating authority right and this does not include central board this does not include appellate tribunal this does not include commissioner appeals because the role of appellate authority comes only where the role of adjudicating authority ends right so it is that that the adjudicating authority has passed an order that so and so as a per person has not complied with the provisions and accordingly this is the penalty now the person is not accepting with the, that order and he says i am going to file an appeal against this decision right so unless this decision is there this order is there no appeal and as long as there is no appeal the no role is given to the commissioner appeal or to the appellate tribunal so that's why i'm saying the role of appellate authority comes only when the role of adjudicating authority ends so the definition it is given that the officers who are responsible for taking the, the decisions and passing the orders so these decisions and orders are purely administrative in nature right so whether compliance is there or not so not what kind of compliance whether the bill of bill of entry filed with the person in that the amount of the duty has been assessed correctly or not or the value of the value declared is correct or not all those decisions are taken by the officers and accordingly the orders are passed so officers are responsible for taking the decisions and passing the orders which are purely administrative in nature they are, those are called as adjudicating authority assessment assessment word we have already heard before what is assessment assessment is actually determination of the amount of duty so it is you can say quantification of the amount of duty payable that is assessment assessment involves a number of stages and that the very first step itself is classification then identification of the goods then valuation and then comes the amount of duty there on right so those many steps are involved here the definition is enlarging the scope of the word assessment what it says assessment includes a provisional assessment self assessment reassessment and any assessment in which the duty assessed is nil right so assessment does not necessarily mean that there has there is a duty so even when there is no duty there, there still it is it is required to be assessed that there is no duty so assessment includes right so assessment we said it is the quantification of the amount of duty so where the quantification amount is zero that is also an assessment so that includes provisional assessment reassessment self assessment as well as any other assessment where it comes to the quantification of the amount of duty the next is baggage now baggage is these are belongings of a passenger if there is a passenger he is carrying the goods then that is referred as a baggage now friends baggage is a big chapter in or rather it is a big part of this chapter so when we come to the baggage i'll explain you but understand one thing very clearly if there is a passenger then the goods he is carrying that will be referred as baggage right and it is not necessary that baggage is always with the passenger the baggage can come before or after the arrival of the passenger right so it is the belongings of the passenger not necessarily along with the passenger then the next definition is beneficial owner beneficial owner the new definition the, this says means any person on whose behalf the goods are being imported or exported or who exercises effective control over the goods being imported or exported so the person having effective control over the goods being imported or exported he is being referred as a beneficial owner bill of export this is one document required to be filed for the exporting the goods but it is required only when the goods are exported through the land route then coastal goods this we have to understand coastal goods are the goods which are transported through sea route from one port to another port within india coastal goods goods which are transported within india from one coastal port to another coastal port right what is coastal port friend this is different from custom port A little later we'll talk about but right now let me explain you under section 
the central board is having a right to determine which will be the custom port, which will be the coastal port. The custom port is not allowed to be used for the domestic transportation and the coastal port is not allowed to be used for the purpose of import and export. That is the difference, right? So clearly ports are defined that this is custom port, this is coastal port. So goods which are, which are being shipped from one coastal port to another coastal port within India, those goods are called as coastal goods, right? But the goods which are being transshipped, those are not referred as coastal goods. Now you can ask me a question, what is transshipment? So transshipment word relates to imported goods which arrive in India and from the place of arrival, those are shifted to some other place, maybe in India or maybe abroad, but without any assessment or without payment of duty. Right. So these are imported goods on which a duty has not been paid and those are being moved from one port to another port within India. Those are called transshipment goods. So coastal goods does not include transshipment goods. Right. So you can say that all the goods which are being moved from one place to one port to another port in India, those are coastal goods. No. There can be two categories, only coastal goods and transshipment goods. So coastal goods are those which are either manufactured or produced in India or which are imported and on which the duty has been paid. And then we have transshipment goods. These are imported goods which are being shifted from one port to another port in India and on which no duty has been paid. Though that is called as coastal port and coastal goods. Then conveyance, this is one common word for all modes of transportation. Conveyance, it is one common word for all modes of transportation. So it may be vehicle, it may be aircraft, it may be vessel or it may be any other mode of transportation. Custom airport. So just now I referred under section 7, the central board is having a right to determine which airport will be referred as a custom airport. And the custom airport is mainly for import and export of goods. Right. But in airport, the passengers are also involved, but passengers necessarily carry some of the goods. So this act does not deal with the passenger. This act deals with the goods only. So it is not talking about the person coming to India, person leaving India, but it is talking about the goods coming to India and goods leaving India. And that is, you can say import or export by air. So that can be done only from the custom port or rather custom airport. Then custom area. This is area within the custom port and within the custom port custom airport and this reference we will find in little bit more detail under section 8 so the commissioner having jurisdiction over the custom port custom airport is having the right to fix the area within that which will be called as custom area let me give you an illustration a little bit assuming that this is Mumbai airport Right? This is complete airport. Here we have domestic terminal. This is domestic terminal. And here we have international terminal. Right? Airport is same, but terminals are different. Right? Quite possible the commissioner of customs declared, so this entire airport has been declared by the CBC as a custom port, custom airport. CBC, this is Mumbai airport right now this is a custom airport already declared by CBC right and in this custom airport the commissioner has declared a specific area to be called as custom area say he has declared this area is custom area. So this is custom area. Okay. So within the port, within the airport, there is an area which is, de which is declared or defined or you can say fixed by the commissioner having jurisdiction over that which will be called as custom area. And the relevance of this area is entire quantity of the goods which are imported into India or which are to be exported from India should be loaded or unloaded within the custom area only.
because this remaining area can be used for international purpose for domestic purpose both but this is exclusively for the purpose of import and export of goods so loading as well as unloading of the imported or export goods should be within the custom area only and the goods once brought in custom area cannot be removed therefrom except with the permission of the officer right so that is slightly different area right so custom airport does not mean it is a custom area within the custom airport there is one area which is decided by the commissioner which is called as custom area and for that we will find a reference in section 8。so now next one we have custom station now custom station is one word which includes custom port custom airport land custom station foreign post office as well as international courier terminal right so it is one word which covers all places where from import export takes place so custom port custom airport land custom station international courier terminal as well as foreign post office all taken together we use one word custom station then there are dutiable goods so duty is not only an import goods duty is also there on export goods of course it is very very limited but these are the goods on which the duty has not been paid so first thing is whether it is dutiable whether the, first of all whether the article comes under the category of goods because the goods are already defined right and literally all the movables are covered in that right so any article being imported it will certainly come under the category of goods number two whether there is a duty or not for that we have to refer to the classification and if there is a duty then that is dutiable right and then <coughs> if the duty has not been paid then that is referred as dutiable goods the next word comes on page number four the word is entry now entry literal meaning carries a different uh, li this word carries a literally different meaning but here it is a legal term entry means filing of the relevant documents for the purpose of clearance of the goods so in case of import we file bill of entry for the removal of goods in case of export there is a, there are export documents which are filed for obtaining the permission for export so submission or filing of the documents for obtaining the permission or you can say for the removal of goods that is called making of entry right so entry don't understand in the literal sense don't refer the dictionary for this word right otherwise you will you will never understand the meaning of this so entry means submission of the relevant documents for import as well as for export of the goods who is an exporter exporter mean in relation to any goods at any time between their entry for the export and it and at the time before they are exported include the owner beneficial owner or any person holding out to be the exporter right so either owner or beneficial owner or any person who is claiming to be the owner he will be referred as exporter then we have foreign post office this is a new definition this is means any post office appointed under clause e of subsection 1 of section 7 so section 7 in any case we are going to refer later but that talks about the appointment of custom port custom airport land custom station then also in land container depots then the then the transit routes and international Courier, courier terminal as well as foreign post office all those are appointed by CBC under section 7 the next definition foreign going vessel or aircraft this is an interesting definition and this is relevant also for the purpose of exam because this is connected to one topic that is stores so there again we will refer that right now let me explain you what does it mean foreign going vessel or aircraft 